morning. Thank you so much for joining us. And I have to say, I mean, all credit to you as one of the people, along with your wife, who I believe was a nurse at the Tavistock, for speaking out on this issue and bringing it public because there have been concerns about the clinic for a long time. And I know you held concerns for a long time and, and were trying to change things within the clinic, um, but were unable to do so. Well, my, my wife actually whistle blew in 2005. She works in the clinic. I was a manager of the trust. The, 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 the JIDS is only just one part of the overall trust. So I was a manager of the trust. And, um, and a medical report was done in 2006 by the medical director, David Taylor, who basically said this, this clinic is operating outside ordinary sort of medical governance for for uh, various different um and 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 given the, the fact that it's a, a, a treatment for vulnerable kids yeah. and when they embark on the treatment it's got sort of long-term implications there was a lack of research follow-up and looking at the sort of downside of treatment so that was a report which is done in 2006 i have to say it was largely ignored yeah. and then when i took over a voluntary position as, uh, on the Board of Governors in 2018, the first thing that arrived on the desk was a report by a, a senior colleague of mine, David Bell, and a letter from 10 parents basically saying the same things that concern my wife and that been written about by the clinical director in 2006. So nothing had changed over the past 15, 16 years. But, but what had changed was an awful lot of young people's bodies. And we have seen an explosion in the number of young people, particularly in the number of young girls uh, who, who believe that they are trans and believe that the solution to all of their problems, their mental health problems or whatever else is going on in their lives is, is to transition their gender. There's been a real concern about the sort of um, I was like, social contagion is the term they use, isn't it? That this becomes something that you know people are seeing on social media, seeing on YouTube, their friends do it. We see clusters in schools, in areas where more and more, particularly girls, uh, uh, groups of friends uh, decide that they are trans. And the real concern that when they seek help, teachers are told they should affirm this view. The gender identity clinics like Tavistock, come, you know, affirming it. And I mean, Kira Bell talked in her court case about how she was you know, rushed through and how she was what 14 15 years old that she you know she only had sort of three hour long sessions and then she was put on puberty blockers which we know i mean for a start never been properly you know long term tested and, and reviewed we've there's no follow-up um, in terms of how the effect is but we know can drastically alter a child's life a child's fertility chances of ever having a child um ability to ever experience orgasm to have any sexual gratification i mean th there is no way in the world that an under 16 year old can take those sort of life altering decisions lightly and yet adults were were going yeah here you go tick next next one here you go tick next and and these children's lives and bodies have been drastically altered as a result Absolutely. I mean, I've been in psychiatry for over 40 years and and going back sort of 15 years, what the, the, the presentation was small numbers of over 18s, male to female. Since 2000, there's been this enormous rise and, as you say, a complete change in who's presenting. So you're getting uh, 12, 13, 14 year old girls transitioning to boys at a very young age so it's a completely different cohort and yet we're sort of carrying on as if this is the same issue with these this new population if you like yeah this complete lack of curiosity within the trust so various members of the board tried to sort of challenge the trust management that this needed serious attention and what I found was that the trust weren't really interested. They wanted to shut down the argument. Well, everyone, everyone what, who raised any concerns was just called transphobic. Exactly. And, and the, the, really, the, um, the political tail was wag, wagging the clinical dog. And that the, the trust wouldn't listen to these legitimate concerns. Mm -hmm. Whereas, as you say, there's a lot at stake for these kids. So we've got to be really appropriately cautious, mm -hmm. take our time. Ironically, the trust's history, I trained there, I was a very proud member of the trust, was in looking at sort of developmental psychology, psychotherapeutic approaches and systemic family therapy. And 
none of that thinking was applied yeah. in this area. And, and this is this is the thing because uh, this is the thing that's so strange. Is Tavistock has got a wonderful reputation. I actually live very near there in North London, and I know people who work there who are really good people. Um, but this idea that um, you know you've got all these young people who say suddenly get a new cohort of young teenage girls. And and the and, and we know that a huge number of them have got lots of other difficulties. They've got you know, they'll, they'll have eating disorders. They'll a huge number of have have autism. Um, a lot of them have got real you know relationships, strained relationships with friends or family. There's a lot of stuff that you know. Say someone like you as an expert, you will be able to talk them through and work through. And talking therapy we know is incredibly powerful. Uh, and yet it was just oh no trans. Yet yeah, tick that box put you on the puberty blockers or off you go. And what a surprise, it wasn't the solution to all their problems. Well, listen, thank you, Marcus, so much for talking to us. Thank you so much for speaking out about this. And, and